In this unit, we're going to learn about some of the basic properties of matters. Uh, elements, compounds, and mixtures, the difference between the three, uh, methods for separating mixtures. We'll delve into the properties of solutions, properties of acids and bases, and we'll even hit a little bit on temperature. So first, elements, compounds, and mixtures. By the end of this video, you will be able to distinguish between elements, compounds, and mixtures. So let's start with a pure substance. What is a pure substance? It is a chemical substance or any kind of substance with characteristic properties that cannot be altered without changing its identity. The two types of pure substances are elements and compounds. Now elements are pure substances that contain only one kind of atom. Just one kind of atom as we can see in this picture of uh, each blue circle represents an atom, each blue, each blue ball. If it's only one kind of atom, then that lets us know that this is an element that we're looking at. Now, elements are represented by their atomic symbols. An atomic symbol sometimes may have two letters. If one letter is uppercase and the next is lowercase, they are part of one symbol and they represent one element. So, an example would be helium, capital H, lowercase e, so its atomic symbol is HE. Two different letters, but it's part of the same symbol. Yeah. Neon symbol is NE, capital N, lowercase e. Again, both letters are part of the same symbol. That's one atomic symbol. Fluorine, it just has a capital F, and that is the symbol for fluorine. And an element, a pure substance that contains only one kind of atom. Uh, an element is the most basic form of matter that still retains its properties. So, if you want to, so if you want to break down a, a chemical compound, once you get down to the elements, uh, the element is the most basic form that you can get, which still has its unique characteristic properties. Because once you break down past the atomic level, you start to get into subatomic particles, they don't have their own characteristic properties. It's the elements that do. Now let's talk about molecules. Molecules are two or more atoms combined together. For example, I have some uh, nitrogen gas molecules inside of this box, and as you can see they come in pairs. Those are nitrogen molecules. Many elements exist only as molecules. Uh, this nitrogen, um, for instance, has an atomic symbol of N, and we'll write that nitrogen molecule as N2. Now that little number next to the atomic symbol is called the subscript, and that subscript is going to tell you how many atoms there are of that element. So this is telling us that we have two nitrogen atoms that are bonded together to create a nitrogen molecule. Another example, this is a model of a hydrogen molecule. The symbol for hydrogen is H, and there are two hydrogen atoms in the molecule, so the subscript is 2. Thus, we write H2 for the hydrogen molecule. A molecule made of two of the same element is called diatomic. Diatomic simply means two atoms. Di is the Greek prefix uh, for two. Atomic is also Greek in origin. It means um, it means an indivisible particle or atom. So this pretty much means two atoms. Diatomic. This molecule, on the other hand, is not diatomic. This is an ozone molecule, which consists of three oxygen molecules bonded together. Now the symbol for oxygen is O, and ozone is going to be written as O3. It is an element, it's only one kind of atom, yes. Um, it is a molecule because it has two or more atoms bonded together, but this is not a diatomic molecule. So we talked about elements and a bit about molecules, and we saw that a lot of elements are molecules. And now we're going to go into compounds. Chemical compounds are molecules made of different kinds of atoms. 
This right here is a water molecule and water is a chemical compound. It has two different kinds of atoms, hydrogen and oxygen, bonded together. All compounds are described using chemical formulas. Formulas tell us which atoms are in a compound and how many atoms of each kind there are. The chemical formula for water is H2O. That means that every water molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Water, like all compounds, has a definite composition. No matter where in the universe you find water, it's going to have the same shape, the same elements, and the same number of each element. Two H's and an O bonded in this bent shape. That is what the water molecule looks like no matter where you find it. That's what I mean when I say it has a definite composition. This molecule right here is aspirin. Aspirin is a chemical compound made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So it's made of three different kinds of atoms so that's how we know that it is a compound. There are nine carbon atoms if you count them up. They are the black ones. Uh, we have eight hydrogen atoms, which are the white balls, if you can count those up. And we have four oxygen atoms, one, two, three, four. Those are the red balls. Therefore, the chemical formula for aspirin is going to be C9H8O4. Because remember, the formula tells us not only what elements, what atoms there are in a compound, but how many. Aspirin, like any chemical compound, it has a definite composition. I can't stress this enough. Uh, this is actually a fundamental aspect of atomic theory, definite composition. No matter where in the universe I find aspirin, it's going to have this shape, it's going to have this formula, it's going to have the same number of atoms and in the same proportion. So if I go to Rite Aid and I buy some aspirin and I analyze it, it's going to have nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. If I go to Walgreens across town and I buy some aspirin and I analyze it, it's going to have nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens chemically bonded together. That's what I mean when I say that chemical compounds have a definite composition. Mixtures. Mixtures. A mixture is are two or more pure substances that are physically combined. Not chemically combined, but physically combined. There's a big difference. The ingredients in the mixture are not chemically bonded like the elements in a chemical compound. Mixtures do not have chemical formulas and mixtures do not have a definite composition. A mixture of spaghetti and meatballs at one restaurant may be different from a mixture of spaghetti and meatballs at a different restaurant. Uh, for example, one restaurant might use more sauce than the other one. So if we look at these pictures, uh, the restaurant on the left, they use more sauce in their spaghetti than they did on the right. So this mixture is not the exact same as this mixture over here. Now, I'm going to compare mixtures versus compounds. The properties of a mixture is the average of the properties of its ingredients. Let me show you what I mean. Say we had sugar. Sugar is white, uh, tastes really sweet, and, um, and in this case, uh, it's about room temperature. Now, if I mix in Kool-Aid mix that's going to be red in color and it has a really bitter cherry taste if you ever um, tasted some of it without before you mix it in and its temperature it's at room temperature okay now we're going to mix that in with water water is clear it has no taste and let's say the water that we're using is ice cold if we mix those three ingredients together we're going to get a substance that's red and that redness comes from this 
it's going to have a sweet cherry taste and so that cherry taste comes from that mixed with that and finally it's going to be ice cold because this was cold and this isn't hot enough to make the temperature uh, go up any so the Kool-Aid my final product it is an average of these three ingredients and you can see or you can observe each of these ingredients inside of the final product and that is characteristic of a mixture uh, you you can you can detect um, physically the different substances that make it up now let's compare that to a chemical compound and the chemical compound the properties of the compound may differ drastically from the properties of the elements that make it up this is what I mean say I had hydrogen hydrogen is a pure substance it is gaseous hydrogen gas and it's highly flammable so this right here this is um actually uh, most stars burn by burning hydrogen and this is a cloud of hydrogen in space called a nebula um, so th that's the properties those are some of the properties or characteristics of hydrogen now let's look at oxygen oxygen is a pure substance it's an element oxygen is also gaseous and oxygen is highly flammable this candle would not be able to burn if it were not for the oxygen gas in the air so what would happen if I took two flammable gaseous substances and chemically combined them? So if they underwent a chemical reaction, okay, combined chemically, what they're going to do is they're going to release an explosive amount of energy. Now, you don't get that when you mix these together. They just mix together and, and, and nothing really happens. But if when these two react, because reacting is different from mixing it's going to re it's going to release an explosive amount of energy and what you get is water now water is a pure substance it is a liquid and is not flammable water is nothing like oxygen water is nothing like hydrogen so water doesn't have any of these properties it doesn't have any of these properties water is its own unique pure substance it is a chemical compound you can't say that water has the gassiness of hydrogen in the sense that Kool-Aid has the sweetness of sugar you can't say that because water is its own brand new unique pure substance and that is the key difference between mixtures and compounds. Compounds are pure substances. They have their own unique properties, while mixtures are not pure substances. Mixtures are just the average of the ingredients. This water is not the average of oxygen and hydrogen. This water is something completely new.